Uh, thanks very much, and thanks uh, to the moderators and sages uh, for the opportunity uh, to speak to you today. Uh, these are my disclosures, which are not uh, related to this talk. The reason I really like taking care of achalasia is because I think the, the pathophysiology is actually pretty simple. Uh, the patients have a loss of inhibitory neurons that basically causes two problems. The lower esophageal sphincter can't relax with swallowing, and the esophageal body can't push with swallowing. So it's really simple to treat it because the only treatments we know are treatments which lower, uh, lower esophageal sphincter pressure and allow food boluses to just by a gravity uh, passively transit into the stomach. So the patients need three tests before you consider a, a treatment. First is endoscopy to rule out a mechanical obstruction, an esophagram to define uh, anatomy, and then a high-resolution manometry uh, both to confirm the diagnosis and subtype uh, the patient. And then there are four classes of treatments. Uh, one is medications. Uh, the other is botulism toxin injection. Uh, the third is pneumatic dilation. And then I lumped uh, surgical myotomy uh, together, uh, either with uh, a laparoscopic heller uh, or POEM. Uh, so if you were to ask, uh, I come from uh, Northwestern, if you were to ask the residents at Northwestern, you know, which of these treatments is the best, they'd say, oh, yeah, that's a no-brainer. Uh, surgical myotomy is, is by far better. If you ask them why, uh, maybe, you know, the senior residents would say, uh, well, it's more durable or it's more effective. If you ask them, well, can you describe some of the data outlining, you know, comparative trials, you know, you'd hear a lot of silence. So I think I just say that not to rag on the residents, but it's a really complicated decision. Uh, there's a lot of factors that go into it, and actually uh, the, the data is, is much more nuanced uh, than just uh, surgical myotomy is better. So I'll go through each of the non-surgical treatments uh, and talk a little bit about the, uh, the data underlying them. So medications are, are non-selective smooth muscle relaxants, um, and overall they're, they're very, uh, have poor efficacy. Uh, they have to be taken timed with meals, uh, and in older, uh, frail patients who you might think medical therapy would be best, they have significant side effects. Uh, so generally, these are reserved for patients who cannot tolerate uh, more definitive therapy uh, and then also fail botulism toxin ingestion. So it's a, it's a very small subset of, of patients. Uh, Botox injection actually works pretty well. 75% uh, of patients will have a, a good symptomatic response initially. The problem is that it wears off. Uh, and after six months, uh, more than half patients will uh, require retreatment. And with each subsequent treatment, it becomes less and less effective. Uh, so there have actually been six randomized trials comparing Botox with uh, dilation. Uh, and like I said before, there were no differences uh, initially. But you can see uh, at a year afterwards, the relapse rate was much worse with Botox. Uh, so I really reserve this for patients who cannot tolerate uh, a dilation or myotomy from a medical standpoint, um, or as a prov provocative test when there's an uncertainty about the diagnosis. Say a patient with uh, EGJ outflow obstruction with preserved peristalsis who may have heartburn and dysphagia, you're not sure exactly what's going on. This is sort of a safe way to test what would happen uh, if you did more definitive therapy on the lower esophageal sphincter. So then pneumatic dilation is by far the best non-surgical treatment. I'll spend a lot of time uh, talking about it. Uh, so first, uh, to do the procedure, uh, it's four steps. You do an endoscopy. You place a wire. Uh, you then position a balloon fluoroscopically uh, that's passed over the wire. There are three sizes of uh, dilator balloons. So these are really big balloons between uh, 30, 40 millimeters. Uh, as an example, through the scope uh, dilating balloon, the biggest is uh, 20 millimeters. And then uh, you do an upper GI post dilation to make sure there's no perforation. And patients can generally go home the same day, uh, if, obviously, if they don't have a perforation. So pneumatic dilation almost has no side effects or complications other than perforation. Uh, but obviously, perforation is a big deal. Uh, and it, does, it happens not infrequently. So in a meta-analysis of uh, over 300 dilations, uh, the risk was 3.6%. And more than half of those patients required surgery, often via thoracotomy. So it's a big deal when that happens, uh, and it happens not infrequently. So what are the outcomes from dilation? Uh, it's been well compared with laparoscopic color. There have been five randomized trials uh, comparing the two. Um, so at three months, uh, if you pool those in a meta-analysis, uh, Heller was superior in terms of uh, sustained symptomatic uh, relief. You can see the odds ratio is low, so twice as many patients had uh, good results um, as, uh, or the failure rate was, uh, was half as low uh, in Heller as uh, compared to dilation. Uh, at 12 months, it was about the same. Heller was superior in these pooled trials. 
When you look at long-term outcomes, uh, no randomized data, but uh, a single extender experience uh, for Mayo, uh, dramatically better results after Heller. In fact, 100% uh, of patients who had dilation in this series went on to have myota because they had uh, recurrent symptoms. So it seems pretty obvious, right? Laparoscopic Heller is uh, vastly superior to pneumatic dilation. Well, it, it's not quite that simple. Um, the biggest problem is that all these randomized trials use different uh, dilation techniques, and they evaluate symptomatic response differently, differently. But I think this is the same thing. This is the key point. They were all doing the dilation differently. So what is the best available evidence? Uh, and I think it's worth going into the, the results of the European achalasia trial in, in detail. So this is the biggest trial. It had the best outcome measures. It was the best constructed. So when I talk about uh, outcomes of dilation with patients, I, I pretty much uh, exclusively refer to the results of this trial and the method they used. So they started with a 35 millimeter dilation as their initial protocol. This was like a you know, big trial, a lot of funding, and what happened? The first 13 patients, they perforated four of them. So they had to go back and completely reconstruct the design of the trial uh, immediately after starting. Uh, but after that, uh, they had really good success. So they changed the protocol so that every patient got a 30 millimeter dilation, then they brought them back in one to three weeks and did a second stage per protocol 35 millimeter dilation. So every patient got two dilations. Then they followed their symptoms. If they had recurrent symptoms, they were allowed to get a third per protocol dilation uh, up to 40 millimeters. And then after three dilations, if they still had symptoms, they were considered a failure. So everyone got two, some got three. And then they compared this with Heller myotomy uh, with DOOR. Uh, and the criteria for Heller is that if they had any symptoms uh, uh, afterwards, it was considered a failure. Um, so, uh, what were the results? Everyone said, well, with dilation, you need multiple dilations. I was just talking to a resident today and said, well, on average, they got 10 dilations. Well, that's not true. Only 25% of patients required a third dilation. So 75% just got the per protocol two dilations. But there were perforations. So 4%, even with the modified protocol, uh, had perforations, and half of those required uh, surgery. But the results were good. So at two years, and then they just published long-term follow-up at five years, uh, the results in terms of symptomatic improvement were identical uh, between Heller and uh, dilation. Uh, and will people say, well, if they don't have a fund application, they're going to have a lot of reflux. Not true. They actually had less reflux, uh, but it wasn't statistically significant. So then dilation and Heller have similar outcomes. Well, it's not quite that simple. So you then have to look at the individual patient characteristics. And the biggest uh, thing that makes a difference is the achalasia subtype. So taking the results from the European achalasia trial and um, breaking up by subtype, the type 1 patients, there was no difference uh, in outcomes. They had success rates about 80 to 85%. For type 2, and this is something that a lot of surgeons don't want to talk about, uh, dilation was superior. So this is the most common type of achalasia. And the dilation success rate was 100% at two years. Uh, for type 3, though, Heller is much better, and this has been shown in multiple trials. For patients with spastic achalasia, uh, Heller is vastly superior to dilation. Uh, other predictors of failure of dilation were younger patients, uh, so they did better after Heller, uh, and patients who had a significant component of chest pain did better uh, with Heller. So in conclusion, this is sort of how I lay it out for, for patients in clinic. Uh, medications for achalasia did not work. Uh, Botox is just for patients who are too sick from a medical standpoint to undergo dilation or myotomy. And I would say that dilation is not a uh, physiologically less invasive uh, treatment because 4% of the patients are going to perforate. Uh, and those patients, if they don't have surgery, might die. And they need, so they need to be able to tolerate uh, a thoracotomy potentially. Uh, I tell patients that pneumatic dilation and myotomy, and I would include both Heller and Poem at this point, are all standard of care treatments. Um, and that definitely a single dilation is inferior in the long term in terms of efficacy and durability to Heller myotomy. But a two dilation protocol following the European achalasia protocol, to our knowledge, is equivalent in terms of long term efficacy and durability, acknowledging that 25% of patients will have to have a third uh, dilation. Myotomy is definitely better uh, for patients with type 3, and there's more and more evidence, we'll probably hear about this more, that POEM might be even superior to uh, Heller in those patients. But I stress to patients that I think actually surgical myotomy, both POEM and Heller, is actually safer 
than pneumatic dilation because of the risk of uncontrolled perforation. Thanks. Yeah,